Well, maybe scare isn't the right word. I suppose it was his way of teaching me how to take care of myself. Mom was nice sometimes. She'd take us to the park and buy us gifts. More often than not, she turned to the comfort of drugs and alcohol. While she neglected us, my brother Tommy, who was five years older than me, took it up to himself to make sure my needs were met. I never understood why the other kids had moms that cooked their lunches and dads that dropped them off at school while I didn't. But I was content when my brother took up those roles. Till this day, I'm still amazed at how he managed to do it. Nevertheless, Tommy was still a child, so this teaching methods were silly and often included made-up monsters. There was the bushy monster, who had rows of razor-sharp teeth. It really likes rotten teeth, so if you don't brush your teeth every morning and night, Tommy would say it would climb out of the sink and pluck them right out. The sleepy monster, on the other hand, peeked into children's bedrooms at night and hated it when they were awake past bedtime. Tommy said that it would pour sand into the eyes of those naughty children so they would never open their eyes again. There was the crossy monster, the veggie monster, and more. But the most memorable one was the huggy monster. Tommy would tell me about the huggy monster when I was sad. He'd wipe my tears and hug me tight. The huggy monster might be watching. He said in a hushed tone, you gotta enjoy the hug and stop crying, or it'll come and glue us together. All the monsters striked a pang of fear in my younger self, but I always wondered whether the huggy monster was really such a bad guy. It was around six or seven when the incident occurred. When I closed my eyes, a memory would replay. My brother and I were playing in our dingy old room on the second floor when a deafening crash resonated from the living room downstairs. A man bellowed and yelled harsh words at my mother as my mother welled from the top of her lungs. It wasn't the first time mom brought someone to spend the night with her, and this particular man got violent every time. Tommy was shaking, either from fear or anger. I'll never know. He said that mom was a lot nicer when he was younger, before our father left. I guess he still loved her a lot. That might be why he told me to hide in the closet and went down to, to confront the man. He hugged me before he left, smelling of grass from the park he took me to earlier. Don't be scared, all right? He said before turning to leave. Those were the last words he ever said to me. When Tommy went downstairs, there were yells from the man. Another ear-splitting crash the mom let out a blood-curdling scream. Although I was young, I knew that something bad had happened. Please, let Tommy be all right. I pleaded helplessly. For a moment, I thought my pleas had worked. Everything was silent. Mom stopped crying, and the man stopped shouting. Had an angel came to save Tommy? My brief moment of hope was completely shattered when I heard the loud thumps against the wooden stairs. Too heavy to be mom or Tommy. Must be the man, I thought as I shut my eyes tightly. I felt the dry heave starting as the footsteps became louder. Hot tears were streaming down my face as, sob thre as sobs threatened to spill from the tip of my tongue. But I couldn't cry. Tommy would be sad. He wanted me to be brave, so I bit my lip and shut my eyes even tighter. The door was slammed open. I clenched my teeth as I urged myself to calm down. I thought of grass. I thought of the park, of Tommy. The footsteps were louder. He was nearer to the closet. The closet door was wrenched open. I could feel his breath against my nape as I curled into a tighter ball. The breath was rancid and made me want to throw up. But I thought of Tommy and hugs, including his last. I thought of their warmth and Tommy telling me stop crying and be brave. It felt like hours that I sat there, but eventually the figure left and I must have passed out from fear and exhaustion. When I regained consciousness, another figure stood in front of the closet, clad in blue. Tommy? I croaked out to the officer. 
who looked at me with pity. The officer warned me not to look as he escorted me downstairs, but I needed to know what happened to my brother. Beside the couch lay Tommy in a pool of his own blood, shattered glass from a wine bottle embedded into his head. The man's work, no doubt. The sight was horrifying, but it was explainable. The one next to it wasn't. I'll never forget seeing my mother's mouth stretched into a christique smile, eyes a milky white. Her arms were wrapped around the man who bore the same expression. The incident was eventually disclosed to the public as a case of domestic violence and drug overdose. For years, I have tried and tried to convince myself that I was traumatized and emotionally scarred child with too much imagination. Convince myself that what I saw was not reality. Because there's no way drug overdose caused mom's and the man's skin to melt into each other, forcing them into a hug.